Welcome everyone to The Padded Agent. Today we're diving into a topic that is often met with a lot of controversy and misunderstanding. That is ABDL, or adult baby diaper level. Hi, my name is Mark, and I am ABDL. What, this isn't what you thought ABDL was supposed to look like? Did you think all ABDLs just hung around in diapers and pacifiers all day? There is a great many things those not in the ABDL community have been told and misled to believe. So I decided to do this video addressing some of the misunderstandings and misled information that's been told to those on the outside looking in. The goal of the video isn't to make people feel bad or anything of that nature, is to foster a more understanding and promote diversity in a lifestyle and preferences. So let's start with the very basic. What is a BDL? So before we talk about the negative comments that those of us within the ABDL community get on a pretty regular basis, let's understand what ABDL is all about. As I said before, ABDL stands for Adult Baby Diaper Level. There's AB, there's DL, and then there's ABDL. So see, there's people that are under the ABDL umbrella who are actually just diaper lovers. There's people that are just adult babies, but not diaper lovers. So there's a mix. There's a whole mix of people. But ABDL, DL is a community where like-minded adults engage in activities normally related to infants or toddlerhood. Yes, this often includes wearing diapers and onesies, using items such as pacifiers and baby bottles. I myself am not a fan of either one, but it's part of the items that make people feel little. And there's all kinds of other baby-like accessories. Um, me, for example, I have uh, the two-piece pajamas from back when I was a kid. Well, not exactly those, but you know, I have put on some weight since then. Or and have grown, but I have the two-piece pajamas with the uh, little hangies. They look makes me feel like I did when I was a kid. But it is very, very important to understand and acknowledge that this is a consensual adult life choice. Now I'm under the belief that it is just a way of life and it's not a choice because I've never thought to myself. So what would it be to wear? A diaper again. Never thought about that. My attraction to diapers has just always been there. It, I never thought about it until now, but still, I never really thought about just wearing a diaper again. And I would imagine it will always be there. I'll always be in, attracted to diapers. That's just the way it is. Deal with it. But since there is no scientific proof to back my statement up, we'll go ahead and say it's a life choice. Now, let's talk about common misconceptions. One of the reasons ABDL faces negativity is due to misconceptions and misunderstanding as to what ABDL is. These misconceptions often stem from lack of knowledge and understanding. See, there's that word understanding again. By clarifying what ABDL is not, we can begin to break down the barriers of judgment and prejudice. So let's address some of these common misconceptions about the ABDL community. First, let's address that white elephant in the room. No, we have no interest in children. ABDL is an adult community. That's why the first letter is an A for adult. It's an adult community, consensual between adults. Nobody is allowed in the ABDL community if they are under the age of 18. Even if the place they hail from considers them an adult at a younger age, the ABDL community has a very strict global rule. They have to be over 18. It doesn't matter if they're in a country that says 11 years old is considered an adult. The ABDL community's global rule is 18 or over, period. We will not be followed or follow anyone on any social media site that is under the age of 18. We will not text or interact 
or message anybody who is under the age of 18. We do not invite them to any functions. And there's quite a few ABDL functions out there, believe it or not. They don't get invited to any of those. And there is a very strict vetting system to prevent those under the age of 18 from getting in. Now, I'm not going to sit here and say that nobody within the ABDL community ever, ever has any inappropriate relationships with children. I'm not going to sit here and lie to you and tell you that nobody within the ABDL community has done that. We're just like every other community. We have our share of bad apples. The difference between a lot of other communities and us is we can admit to it. And when we find these people, we report them to either the social media peoples, whoever runs it, or the police, whichever one we need to do it for. Then we tell each other about it so that we all can make sure we're looking out for this person and make sure that they're gotten out of the community. Sometimes it works. Sometimes it doesn't. Again, like every other community. Next is it's a sexual kink or fetish for sexual gratification. Yes, most outside looking in think ABDL is a sexual kink or sexual fetish and we're all deviant people, you know, sexual deviants. Hell, even the dictionary lists ABDL as sexual fetish in which males because it would appear there are no females within ABDL. So, see, we broke another misconception. Dress up like babies, including the wearing of adult diapers, mostly for sexual gratification. And, yes, most within the community do look at it as a sexual kink or fetish, but that's for themselves. However, there is a growing number of us within the community I say us because I'm included, who are non-sexual. We don't do it for sexual gratification. We do it because it's a way of life. It's the way we, we are. It's who we are. Sex is usually the furthest thing from our mind when we're in little space. In little space, I'll get to after a while, but it's the furthest thing from our mind. Another one that I've heard, another misconception that I've heard <laughs> is that those in the ABDL community have a low IQ. This I can simply say is not true. First of all, I don't believe in the IQ test or any of that garbage. I don't believe in any of it. I think people put way too much into IQ levels. But the ABDL community is made up of all different walks of life and professions. There are doctors, there are lawyers, there are smartsy fartsy engineers probably a rocket scientist or two. I don't need to know what my IQ is. I don't really care what my IQ is. I've never had a test for IQ, my IQ level. Maybe I did when I was younger, I don't know. But I really don't care. I have lived my life without knowing what my IQ is. And I think I can live the rest of my life without knowing it as well. I just know I'm not smarter than anyone. I don't feel superior to anyone, but yet I also don't feel inferior to anyone. I don't give a damn what people think of me. People can say what they want to about me. I really could care less. So low IQ, I don't think so. Another one, ABDLs have mental health issues. I don't think I will ever understand why if someone is into something that is considered taboo or goes against what is known as normal, they have mental health issues. Yeah, I would be lying if I said there was nobody within the ABO community that didn't have mental health issues. But as we said before, we don't have any more than any other community. Some people within the ABO community uses ABDL as a coping mechanism for a traumatic or dramatic childhood. Whatever made it that way for them is none of my business nor is it any of yours. We need to keep our noses on our faces where they belong. And yes, most of these people are visiting professionals to help them not forget, but to help them move forward from their past. I had a very, very abusive childhood from being relentlessly bullied in, in school. I mean, we're not talking 
like high school. We're not talking just middle school. I was bullied probably from the third grade. I've been, I was bullied all the way through. I was bullied mentally, physically, and yes, sexually. Later I found out that it's actually SA and not bullied, sexually bullied, but hey, but I've worked through that years ago. And to be honest, I think all those experiences in my life have helped me to become the person I am. But some of us in the ABDL community just like to let our inner child out to breathe a little bit. ABDL is not illegal. Not sure how this one started, but I've had many, many, many people tell me what I'm doing is illegal. Even, even to the point of calling the police. You think I'm kidding? It's happened. There was once this woman who is now an ex-friend. Don't understand why, but she was out to save my soul. She was out to save me from myself. When she found out I was ABDL and I wore diapers, all hell broke loose. She called the police and all the police heard was baby diaper adult. So guess who came knocking at Mark's door? So I invited them in. I showed them my ABDL stuff and I told them what ABDL was. They said, oh, okay. Well, sorry to bother you. Thank you. Have a good day. Boom. That was it. So no, it's not illegal. So don't call the police on somebody. Just because you don't agree with it doesn't make it illegal. One misconception that somebody has actually attacked me on is saying it goes against Christian teaching. Now, I'm a Christian minister. I've been a Christian minister for many, many, many years, and I've read my Bible from front to back many times. Nowhere in the Bible does it say anything about ABDL being a sin. Oh, one could do like this person did and just cherry pick a verse out of the Bible. She actually pulled out Corinthians 1311. When I was a child, I spoke as a child, I understood as a child, and I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put childish things away. And I'm here to tell you that when we become adults, which we all do, we do put away childish things. But we do like they say, we put them away. Putting away. If you put something away, you put it in a place where it is normally kept when it is not being used. When it's time for our adult responsibilities, we put away our ABDL side and deal with adult responsibilities. When adulting is done, we bring out the childish things or the ABDL side again. We know we are adults. That is why it starts with A for adult. I mean, we could sit here all day and cherry pick shit from the Bible. For example, a father has the right to sell his daughter into slavery as sanctioned in Exodus 21.7. According to Exodus 35.2, Matthew 12.11, Mark 2.27, Leviticus 23.3, and many, many more, if you work on the day of the Sabbath, which the majority of the world believes Sunday is the day of the Sabbath, you are to be put to death. It was so important. It was written in numerous books in the Bible. So if we're going to cherry pick, let's start cherry picking. I mean, I can go at this all day, but I think you get the point. Humanizing the ABDL community. That's what we're, we're after. I don't care if you like me. I don't care if you respect me. Just remember, I am a human being before anything. To foster understanding, it is crucial to humanize those within the ABDL community, as well as those in a community that you're not part of. We are just like everybody else. We have feelings. I say, if you prick us, do we not bleed? I don't know, that just sounds like something fun to say. Yes, some of us have thicker skin than some of those within the ABDL community, as well as those on the outside looking in on the ABDL community. Again, me, myself, I could care less what people think of me. I am who I am. They can either deal with it or not. It matters not to me. But for many within the ABDL community, when friends, family, and other loved ones 
choose, choose to ignore them, belittle them, and downright walk away from them, feelings do get hurt. The biggest fear within the community is family finding out, mostly parents. Let me tell you a story about me growing up. Now, growing up as a gay man most definitely had its challenges. Those of you that grew up in the 80s as a gay man, a gay woman, whatever, you know exactly what I'm talking about. First, you had the fear of people finding out. Now, back in the 80s, if it was rumored you were gay, just rumored that you were gay, your life became a living hell. I had a friend of mine when I was growing up who was rumored to be gay. We were in the seventh grade. It was rumored he was gay. He wasn't gay. He just had feminine mannerisms. Well, he received death threats. Death threats. Just the rumor of him being gay. He received death threats. And one night, while I was staying at his, his house, all of a sudden, the ripe old age of 12 years old, someone decided to try to make good on that threat. Shooting through his living room window and barely missing me by inches. I mean, it got so bad that his family had to actually up and, and move. So I had to be on guard all the time because I was gay. Now, my dad was very, very open when it came to sex. Nothing more embarrassing than you and your friends sitting in the living room playing Dungeons and Dragons and you hear your dad in the other room scream out to the woman he was with, you want to fuck or don't you want to fuck? Nothing more embarrassing. But even with him being as open-minded as he is about sex, him finding out I was gay scared me to death. My dad had a very, very abusive side when he was drunk, which lies the problem. He was always drunk. But when my dad walked in on me and Andrew, who was my boyfriend for 17 years, in the throes of passion, I was horrified. When I got dressed and walked out into, <laughs> into the living room so Andrew could go home, I was, I was ready for the worst. And all my dad said is, is your boyfriend staying for dinner? So when a parent finds their child's ABDL stash, now, mind you, again, their child who is over the age of 18, the fear is real. So when the parent starts to yell at their child, before anything, they're a human being. They go into fight or flight mode. They go into, I need to defend myself mode. All those times the parents said they loved them, now goes into question. You don't have to agree with them being ABDL. You don't have to like them being ABDL, but it's part of who they are. And they want more than anything to have your understanding, to have your accepting them as who they are. They've accepted you for who you are. Why can't you accept them for who they are? They are not hurting anyone, nor are they hurting themselves. Is it a fad, a phase, a trend, or a way of life for them? They have no idea. But for right now, it is part of who they are. And if you are a friend to someone who came out to you as an ABDL, always remember that person put enough trust in you. They thought enough of you as a friend that they could trust you. By humanizing the person and not the kink or the fetish or the lifestyle, remembering that people are people and not everyone follows the same path, we can foster an age of understanding. It's not up to us as fellow human beings to tell someone how they are to live. My goal for this video isn't to make people feel bad. It is to promote respect and understanding for diverse lifestyles. I want to encourage open-mindedness, empathy, and acceptance of others. Even if their choices seem to be unusual or unconventional to us, let's focus on fostering a world where everyone feels valued and respected, regardless of their lifestyle, regardless of their culture. I am Christian. I don't care if a friend of mine is atheist. I don't care if a friend of mine is has a different spiritual walk than me. They have a different 
lifestyle than me. They have a different belief as me, and that's okay. Okay, so quickly, let's talk about terms within the ABDL community. This will give you a little bit of information so that you can have something to ask that ABDL in your life. A little. This would be, for the sake of a better word, would be the child within the ABDL community. A big, aka caregiver. This would, of course, be the adult, the caregiver, the mommy, the daddy, the big, whatever the dynamics of their relationship want it to be. A switch, someone that can go either way. Little space. Little space is the headspace that we littles go into. You can call it age regression. You can call it regression, however they want to call it, whatever it means to them. To me, at night, I come home from work, adult responsibilities first, I take my shower, I get myself all dazzled up in my little attire, my pajamas and whatnot. This is, of course, after I had dinner and everything else. I go into my room and I'm in little space for 30 minutes to three hours, depending on what it is. And I just let that inner child out and have fun. I play with Lego, watch TV, watch a cartoon, whatever, wrestle with my, with my plushie, depending on what I do. But it is where I regress to. I regress back to a time when things were simpler and a time when I felt the safest. So in closing, we in the ABDL community are just like everybody else. We have kinks, we have fetishes, lifestyles, likes, dislikes, feelings, and all the emotions, just like everybody else. We just so happen to wear diapers. Everybody has a kink or fetish or lifestyle. Everybody does. And if you try to tell me you don't, I can tell you you're lying. We are all on this rock just trying to understand our place on it, trying to carve out our own little area of the rock. Let's try to make the world a little better by allowing people to be who they are. Just because you don't like something doesn't mean it's wrong. As long as it's not hurting anybody, hurting them, or illegal, nobody has the right to subject someone to disrespect, ridicule, and devalue them. It just means they are not like you. So I encourage you to look up true information about the ABDL community and not believe all the naysayers who think they know what ABDL is, though they're not even involved in the community. They're, they speak with authority and as if they are experts, but instead talk to that person in your life that you just found out or somebody that you're thinking might be ABDL and learn what ABDL is to them. It's not how it makes you feel. It's not on what it means to you. It's what it means to them. In, in most cases, because remember, we have our fair share of bad apples in the community, but in most cases, those within the ABDL community are very supportive of each other, loving and caring of each other, look out for each other. That ABDL in your life may be part of your family, they may be your friend, they may be a coworker, but to me, they are family, and I will defend them and protect them with my dying breath. Have you ever seen a lion go after a gazelle? So, thank you for watching. Thank you for taking the time to watch it. I hope this gave you a better understanding, a bird's eye view, if you will, about the ABDL community. So, like, subscribe, and share this with someone you think could benefit from this video. And until the next time, stay open-minded, stay informed, and most importantly, stay kind. Bye for now.